His father was the great comedian, Jimmy James. And if I say to you all, are you putting it about that I'm balmy? You'll know who my guest is. It's Mr. James Casey. Good afternoon, Jim. Good afternoon. Hello there. How are you? Fine, fine. Yeah. Oh, good, good. It's true, isn't it? You were the BBC's head of light entertainment for many years. Uh, in Manchester, in yes. In Manchester, yes. yes. Yeah. And, of course, your dad, the late, great Jimmy James. Wasn't yes. he just so fabulous? The comedian's comedian. Absolutely. He was the first one I ever heard described like, uh, like that, as the comedian's comedian. Of course, a lot of people have said it since about others, but... His, his was uh, said about 50 years ago. That's right, that's <coughs> right. And everybody wanted to be like him, didn't they? Everybody wanted to, to just take him off. There's well, so many people. Yes, but they all admired his talent, all the other comics. Mm -hmm. yeah, they I mean, they uh, said, didn't they, they used to come into the wings. Everybody came to watch your dad perform. This is what everybody said, you mm. know. Uh, Alfred Marx said that when he was writing to him in his last days. Uh, Frankie Howard, Eric Morecambe all said it's that you know they used to stand on the side and watch him every performance but now of course you carry on the act and, and as we were saying jim i imagine that some people might think you know you're still your dad and you know and think you've well about a hundred or something <coughs> if i looked 110 i would be yes <laughs> but you don't <laughs> but uh, the um it, it started actually with uh, uh, about a week before i left the bbc uh parkinson and his producer rang me up and said, we've got Roy Castle as the guest on the Parkinson's show. Will you come on with Eli and, and Roy and do your father's act? And I said, well, yes. And <clears throat> so I went down and I, I mean, I hadn't been on the stage for years. Uh, and uh, we were, in fact, we were waiting to go on after rehearsal. And uh, this American woman uh oh gosh i forget her name. she was in the film with frank sinatra sang who wants to be a millionaire oh yes yeah. celeste home celeste home yeah and she said to me how long you been doing this act <laughs> and i said tonight and she said what do you mean i said well i don't do this i'm a bbc producer and it's 26 years since i was on the stage and she said gee ain't you nervous i said well i wasn't but i've got 10 minutes now to think about it <laughs> And uh, she said, well, I'm nervous and I'm just going to be interviewed. So I said, well, I think if you keep going, it'll work. I will be. <laughs> anyway, that wasn't done. Uh, I thought, well, it doesn't matter if it's lousy because it's just a tribute to Dad, you know. Uh, anyway, everybody liked it. And uh, a few months, well, a month later, Roy Castle rang me up and said, I'm doing a big show in Birmingham and they want the act. Will you come and do it? So... With Eli, I started going around with Roy doing spots in different places. And then, after about six months, uh, somebody rang me up. Uh, and I'd by that time left the BBC see, and said, we'd, we'd do the Royal Variety Show. And uh, I was staggered. <laughs> and uh, I remember ringing Eli, uh, who is my cousin, by the way. His name is Jack Casey, although he's stage name is Eli, Eli. <laughs> uh, and his stammer is for real uh, and I said uh, we've been offered a gig but there's no money and he said well what, what are you ringing me for <laughs> we're not wor working for nothing I said well it's a very good class date you know nice people he said oh to hell with that I said it's the ones to do the royal command <laughs> Oh. He said, oh, my God. <laughs> he changed his mind, did he? <laughs> he said, you've been back in show business six months and you're doing the Roy Wright show. I said, well, they recognise class when they see it. Of you course. Because I said, it's 30 years since you did the Roy Wright show, but I've got you back again. <laughs> he must have been absolutely <laughs> thrilled and delighted with that. Uh, the, the final thing was, when we got there, <clears throat> before we did it, it was a telegram. Uh, and it was, uh, it said... Instead of saying to Jim Casey, Roy Castle, and, and Eli Woods, it said to Jim Casey and company, <laughs> which is a great send-up for Eli and Roy, you know. Yes, yeah. Uh, Have you had one or two um, gentlemen doing the third man, as it were? Oh, about, uh, about 16. Oh, <laughs> so few. Uh, I mean, off the top of my head, I can think of, well, the next one was Les Dawson, who mm -hmm. was a great pal. 
he did it. Uh, Roy Hood's done it. Uh, Bernie Clifton, who oh, incidentally is yeah. Bernie, was the man who sent the telegram. <laughs> uh, uh, Jimmy Cricket. Uh, oh, 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 just tell that story, Jim, about Jimmy Cricket. Well, <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is folks, you have to hear this. <clears throat> Jimmy uh, was a bit worried, you see, as, as they often are, these people, because we hardly do any rehearsal, you see. And Jimmy said, I'm a bit worried about it, you know, remembering, <laughs> which comes like India, Africa, and all that. So I said, well, write it on the box. You've got the box under your arm. Just write on it, Africa, lions. Nyasaland, giraffe, India, elephant. Oh, I'll do that, Jim. Yes, I'll do that. Great. <clears throat> so he came on, and I, you know, he says, are you putting it around the land bar, me? And instead of saying, no, not me, I said, are you Irish by any chance? Which threw him. And uh, <laughs> As it might. <laughs> then I told the audience, you see, I said, before he came on, I told him what had happened, that he'd had to write it on the box. And I said, he's written it, and he's upside down and he's facing you. So I knew he was Irish. <laughs> well, of course, Jimmy is shattered. And then I said to the bloke in the front row, when I speak, will you answer? Because you can read it. See, Jimmy can't. Oh, that's a great story. <laughs> Alan, Alan Scott, who was here with me this afternoon, Jimmy, it was at uh, uh, well, one of your last concerts at the oh, City yeah. Varieties. Alan, uh, you, you remember the standing Hello, room? Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Alan. It's lovely, lovely to speak to you. And you. And seeing we're at the studio in Bradford here, your dad, I think it was 1963, possibly 62, 63, yeah. I summit the Alhambra Theatre here in Bradford, yes, and yeah. I went every night. And, yeah. I, and I could hardly afford it, I'll tell you. <laughs> the bus fare killed me, never mind that. Yes. And uh, he was brilliant. I I watched it, and what I did like was the first night sketch. Oh, which the drunk. Went, with a drunk one. Yes. Which well, you, you, you don't do that much. No, uh, no, not at all. I mean, he was the... Uh, I mean, that's how he became famous, as a drunk. That's right. Uh, and the Stooges thing just happened by accident in London. Uh, so. But the, 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 I didn't realise just how wide his, his fan club was, if you like. Oh, yeah. I remember watching Parkinson, and uh, Peter O'Toole was the guest. Yes. And I'm watching this famous film actor, you know. And Parkinson mentioned Jimmy James, and Peter O'Toole said, Oh, Jimmy James. Well, of course, every actor went to watch Jimmy James to learn how to play a drunk. Yeah. And I was absolutely flabbergasted. You know, really? I didn't think it had got into the legitimate theatre like that. And the other lovely little story was there was a <coughs> great drunk who um, was with Thora Heard in the series um, uh, oh god his name. Uh, Freddie? Freddie, Freddie Frinton. Frinton. Freddie Frinton. Yeah. And uh, when my father was well, dying, really, the last few weeks. <clears throat> Freddie was in Blackpool, and he came to see my dad, and he came out onto the landing and just cried and cried. And, yeah. and he said to my mother, I'm sorry, Emmy, I can't come and see him again. I can't stand seeing him like that when I've just admired him all my life. That's right. And I remember when I was once in my dad's dressing room, and this stage doorkeeper, the hall keeper, came up and said, if somebody w wants to see you, Mr. James, uh, my father said, well, who? He said, well, he said, not to give his name, to tell you it's the number two company. And my father said, oh, it's Freddie Frinton. And I, I said, what do you mean? He said, well, Freddie always calls himself the number two company because I'm the number one. And I thought, well, <laughs> how, how modest can you be, you know? <laughs> but he was number one, wasn't he, Jim? I mean, well, this he is, was. This is incredible thing, I mean, you know. you've taken this act on and on. Everybody loves it. I mean, you were at the Varieties just a few weeks ago, and as I said, Alan was there, and you've got, yeah. what, three minutes um, ovation before you opened, uh, well, yes, before you, you said a word, wasn't yeah. it, Alan? You, 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 you did. You did, Jim. I was there. Of course, I know both acts off by heart, and I think if you remember, I told you yeah. uh, years ago, unfortunately, if your dad had wanted royalties, we didn't get much anyway. No. <laughs> but the, the, the three of us, we did it in, in like, church halls and things. Oh, well, every, all over the place people have yeah. done this, and they tell me, say, oh, I've got it on tape, you know, and we do it at the 
the local hall or That's the local right. whatever. And actually, Anne will tell you the the gentleman that played Eli for me. He was Eli's double. No, I'm not Certainly kidding. Jim. He'd known oh. he'd known it to dress up. Yes, no, no, the face. He, he, because he studied the act. He came with me to the Alhambra yeah. in Bradford, and we watched the act inside out. Mm. But it was so so marvellous. I mean, I saw your dad at Blackpool, ABC Blackpool. Yeah, I saw him everywhere. And actually, at the City Varieties, um, although um, you weren't actually top of the bill there but at the end when you did the finale you couldn't tell the difference between the applause when you two walked on and well, it was, it was you did a marvellous marvellous spot it was lovely the audience thought pleasure. you the yeah, audience we thought you were top of the bill it. well it's 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 good stuff you know i mean it's uh and the interesting thing is that all these people want to do it you see yes i mean paul shane uh, pa uh, Eli was in pantomime with him and yes. Paul Shane said do you think Jim would let me do the act with you <laughs> and he said well sure you know yeah. <laughs> we get booked at the same bill and well Paul must have done it about 12 different times different places um, and this is what's happened you know uh, people have just been absolutely thrilled to do it. That's well, right. I've put my request in, haven't I, Jim? Oh, yeah. I oh, said, yes. next time yes. you're short, I've got yes. a long coat, I've got a daft hat, <laughs> and I'm sure I can find a box. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Jim, Anne knows the routine, but I know it better than her. Yeah. Yeah. No, he doesn't. <laughs> I come, well, the thing, I, I what I like cheap. to see is when we have all these, well, they're all being stars, really. Yes. Uh, I've, the great thing is they go wrong because they're not used to, you know, exactly. we don't really rehearse it. And that's what I like, because then I can add lib. And uh, yeah. Of course, yeah. it's even funnier. And the audience love it when something oh, goes yeah. wrong, don't they? they? I mean, if somebody trips up at you know, any time, or if the scenery falls over, it's just great. Yeah, great. Just Good. Absolutely. That's all what they paid the money for. All well, I, can I mean, Liz Dawson, uh, yeah. Yeah, when he, he went wrong, and I said to the audience, I said, there you are, you see, you get a lad, you try to give him a break, and he lets you down. <laughs> yeah. And I said, Wonderful. Roy Castle's cheaper than him. <laughs> that's right. And then the rest came back. He said, well, it's not my fault. It's working with that human hairpin there. <laughs> oh, Eli. Yeah. All, yeah. all I can say with the, the programme, which wherever you are appearing, please try and let us know. I do mention you on the programmes that I do with the BBC. All I want, if I want a phone call in, I mention your dad. And I'm sure your dad would have been very, very proud of you that Saturday at the City Varieties, Jim. Well, because it was a pleasure. It was a very hard taskmaster, I'll tell you, to work with. Was he really? Well, mm -hmm. because he was the greatest ad libber I've ever known, and I've known almost every comic, you know, up till 20 years ago anyway. Yeah. And no one could, could come near him as an ad libber, but he expected you to do it. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, there are lines in the, sh in the script, which I put in and Roy Castle put in and so on, uh, because he forced us. I mean, I remember with me, he said one night, he's talking about women and wonderful women. And he said, well, we've always had wonderful women, haven't we? <laughs> and he looked at me and I said, I haven't. So, <laughs> no, I didn't answer him, you see. And he said, I'm talking to you. You'd like a wonderful woman, wouldn't you? And I thought, my God, what do I say? And I, I said, I I'd sooner have a bounty bar, <laughs> which was a good laugh, you see. <laughs> And then he went on and said, you shouldn't have a bounty bar on a woman. And when Roy did it, he added, any day. That's right, he did, didn't yes, it? Yes, any day. But what about a night when the moon's out? <laughs> you'd like something better then. You'd like a nice bit of crackling. And Roy came back with, you mean one of them crunchy bars? <laughs> so <clears throat> you, you had to come back with something, or at least come back with a line that could get him to say something funny. That's yeah, right. yeah. And if you didn't, when you came off, he'd say, "What are you doing there? You're cue struck, standing there." Oh, so you got but into I'd trouble, say didn't you? Answer me. Yeah. So you you learnt that you just had lived, and and then we used to try and force him. <laughs> and I can remember Eli once at Blackpool, and there's a new song had just come out called "Who's Got the Ding Dong, Who's Got the Bell." Yeah, and. At one point in the act, my father used to say, uh, say, we've had a lot of requests for songs. What do you suggest we sing out of the two songs we know? And I used to say, hey, round the corner, which was the song. Yeah. 
And before we went on, Eli said to me, when he asks you, don't answer him. I've got one. So the father says, what do you suggest we sing? And I didn't reply. And from behind him, Eli said, who's got me ding dong? And my father turned and said, well, who's got you? what? He said, who's got your ding dong? He said, yes. He said, well, you're a big lad now. You ought to be able to look after him. <laughs> Did you have it with you when you came on? What colour is it? And he went on. Oh, no. <laughs> Get it oh, laughed. He was great. And just, he just, you know, he just, we deliberately tried to throw him, and you couldn't. Oh, that, that was very naughty of you, Jim, wasn't it? But, but well, it was I all thought every fun. comic... I thought every comic did that, but then I, when I went to the BBC, I discovered that none of them did it. None of them did it. No, no. You and your dad are unique, Jim, and we could talk all day. In fact, we <laughs> could talk all week, I know that, uh, about your comedy. Long may you reign, Jim. Thank you. Mr James Casey, the, one of the foremost comedians in this country. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you very Jim. much. Bye. 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 Bye.